bugs. Creepy, crawly, and absolutely essential to life on Earth. Most people try to avoid them, but I've always done the opposite. My name is Jason Miller, naturalist and professional bug nerd. My mission is to inspire curiosity about the most underappreciated and misunderstood animals on the planet and inspire action to preserve and protect them. We may not always love bugs, but we definitely need them. Want to know how? Then let's get bugging. I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. This planet, Earth, is covered in poop and corpses. I know, bummer. But not to worry, because Earth also has the greatest custodial staff that anyone could ask for. Cockroaches, beetles, termites, millipedes, springtails, and literally tons of other bugs work around the clock to not only get rid of all the gross stuff, but to recycle it. Let's take a look. For many organisms, death isn't the end of life, it's just a continuation of it. When this tree fell in the forest, it made a sound, but more importantly, it released chemical signals into the air to let other organisms know that it's time to start decomposing. Trees are made of something called lignin, which is what keeps them so strong and sturdy, but it's also remarkably difficult to break down. Fungi are able to convert lignin into simple sugars, which can be consumed by bacteria, other fungi, and of course, invertebrates. So, although it's a big, strong tree, I can break it apart with just my hands now. That's how well the system works. Two of the most important job titles in the natural world are decomposer and detritivore. Decomposers are any organism that breaks down dead organic matter. A detritivore is a type of decomposer, like these isopods. What makes detritivores different from other decomposers is that they consume small bits of decaying matter, digest it internally, then excrete leftover nutrients. Decomposers like fungi digest their food externally by breaking it down at the molecular level. Detritivores and other decomposers often work in tandem by breaking matter down into forms that the other is able to digest. Some fungi isn't able to consume any dead material until it's first broken down in the digestive system of a bug, and some bugs can't eat rotting organic material until it's first broken down by fungi. To take the relationship a step further, many detritivores will also consume bacteria and fungi, and when a detritivore dies, its body will be eaten by bacteria and fungi. The relationship between dead organic matter, decomposers, and detritivores means that eventually this entire tree will be converted into nutrient-rich soil for other plants to grow in, even plants of its own species. To test how efficiently some bugs can break down dead tissue, I'm going to put a slice of raw fish into a bin filled with litter beetles and their larvae. Litter beetles occur worldwide and aren't especially picky with their diet. Along with rotting meat, these 6mm long beetles will feed on leaf litter, animal droppings, mold, the eggs and larvae of other insects, and if nothing else is available, litter beetles are perfectly happy just eating one another. Now a lot of you are probably asking, Jason, when are you going to talk about poop? Number one, don't ever use that tone with me again. And number two, number two, sorry. Anyway, when animals make doo-doo, there is still a lot of nutrients left over, especially in the case of large herbivores who, generally speaking, aren't super talented at digesting their food fully. Thankfully, dung beetles have evolved a lifestyle that makes excellent use of those wasted nutrients. There are over 6,000 species of dung beetles spread across the planet, and they all share one common trait. They eat shit. To take it a step further, many species also roll dung into a ball, bury it underground, and lay their eggs inside of it. This way, the larvae hatch into an immediate source of food and moisture that's rarely, if ever, disturbed by other animals. It's icky, but it's effective. 
And by moving dung underground and ingesting it, they're also helping fertilize the soil and promote new plant growth by dispersing seeds. In this way, they're ecosystem engineers as well as sanitation workers. The ancient Egyptians seemed to recognize the importance of these insects. The sacred scarabs that are commonly depicted in Egyptian artwork are actually dung beetles. Images and carvings of scarabs were most often seen in tombs and religious temples, representing transformation and resurrection. It's easy to judge dung beetles and other detritivores as gross because they live in conditions that we consider gross. But this is a gross misrepresentation, because if it wasn't for these gross animals, our gross planet would be significantly grosser. That's as clear as I can make it. And there's perhaps no better example of how the detritivore lifestyle can lead to bad publicity than our old friend, the cockroach. As far as bugs go, roaches are right up there with mosquitoes in terms of popularity. But I think this is unfair. Of the 4,600 different species of cockroaches, only about 30 are considered pests. And of those 30, only four are able to seriously infest your home. The other 4,570 species of cockroach prefer the great outdoors, munching on detritus and providing insectivores with a reliable food source. Cockroaches have the reputation of being pretty much indestructible, and while many species are certainly tough, no animal is immune to extinction. Here's proof. These are Simondoa cave roaches, Simondoa conserfarium. They were discovered during a biological assessment survey of the Simondau mountain range in Guinea in 2004. Simondau is a part of the Guinean forest ecosystem, a biodiversity hotspot under serious threat from human activity. The entire population of this species was found in a single cave living in a pile of bat guano. Some samples were brought back to the Harvard Museum of Comparative Zoology to be officially described, and they were given the genus name Simandoa on account of the Simondau region where they were discovered, and the species name Conserfaria to honor the need to conserve this incredibly delicate species. This is where things get kind of rough. Along with having rich biodiversity, the Simondoa mountain range is also very rich in valuable minerals like iron ore and bauxite. And shortly after the roaches were discovered, the cave system that they were found in was demolished during a bauxite mining operation. These beautiful little cockroaches were found nowhere else in the world and they're now officially classified as extinct in the wild. The silver lining is that this species continues to live on under human care, and cockroach enthusiasts like myself continue to breed and share colonies to ensure that the species survives even though their habitat was destroyed. Breeding extinct cockroaches and other unique insects is just one of the ways that I choose to take part in bug conservation. It brings me a great deal of joy, but I know it's not for everyone. Luckily, there are many ways that everybody can be a bug conservationist. It can be as simple as choosing not to mow your lawn, but we'll talk more about that next time. Until then, I've been Jason, and we've been bugging.